Director Vitello. What do you like about what Fitzgibbons did, I guess, kind of losing his command and regaining it? Yeah, I, I think as an athlete, things can speed up on you. And, and the key is, I mean, that's going to happen to everybody. Can you kind of refocus, reset, or just kind of calm the storm a little bit? And you saw him take a couple deep breaths, you know, maintain his composure, and uh, get right back into the zone. And the bottom line is, when he's in the zone, he's one of our best guys as it relates to, I don't really look at swing and miss rates that much and things like that. but. He's got about as good a stuff as anyone, especially on the left side of the mound. So if he continues to pour it in the zone, um, he'll have some success this year. And again, for him and everyone else, there would be moments where you're not at your best or you give up a home run or a walk. And can you kind of get back dialed in? And he did that tonight. So that was the best part. Like you always polish the stuff again, maybe just kind of <clears throat> random? Or not really. Um, you know, that Fall World Series deal was, was pretty good for us when, when Fitz started. Um, but Hollis has kind of shown he's assured strikes. Uh, ironically, you know, in the first inning, a couple technically free bases. I mean, you don't, first of all, we don't want to hit guys um, uh, to harm anybody. But when you do hit a guy, you'd like it to be a pitch that just wasn't located where you wanted, uh, but it had conviction to it. And that, that pitch wasn't very good that he threw up there. Um, but a much better second inning and kind of showed some of the uh, some of the stuff he showed us in scrimmages where we started him a bunch and uh, he was very reliable as it relates to strikes. Well, he's had a couple games behind the plate. Just what did you see from Cal defensively? Yeah, he, um, I hate to say it, but the, the season starts and you start to get a different look at guys. So if I'm at home and I'm a fan or even one of you guys and you hear me say we don't quite know what our best lineup is or best outfield combination or this, that, you could say, well, what have you been doing during practice? Well, they're teenage kids, some of them, and uh, games are different. I mean, you'd like guys to practice the way they play in games and vice versa, but games are different. And he seems to be even better in games than he is in, in, in practice. But again, we knew he was defensively uh, fully capable and offensively he showed us as he got here, could be pretty good. And then he just keeps getting better and better offensively. No wind, or definitely if wind's blowing out, he's probably got a couple homers tonight. What are your thoughts on A.J. Rupp's performance tonight? It was great. I mean, for a freshman, um, you know, I don't say it out loud, but I'm feeling it internally when a guy's got the ball in his hand, how I'm feeling. Um, and he made me feel comfortable. Uh, just with his presence, the way the ball was coming out. Um, he's always thrown strikes. We know that's coming. Uh, but just made me feel good <laughs> about wearing this uniform. So that's the best way I can compliment him. He's got a bright, bright future. Um, but if he were to hear me say that, he probably should shrug it off a little bit and say the future is now. I mean, he's, he's really good and, you know, puts a little meat on those bones and continues to work with Frank. He, he could be pretty special. How good was it to empty the bench and see some guys get some extra base hits like Miller, Drawling, Tears, and some of those guys? Yeah, phenomenal. And, and Dylan had a great at-bat against, uh, you know, who I believe will be Grand Canyon's Friday guy uh, and did in a full count pressure situation. Um, he, he's a good hitter. He's talented. And so you kind of expect good things from him. But KT and Miller, man, when it's your first at-bat and you've been waiting an extended amount of time, KT came back in the dugouts. I've been waiting on that for two years. You know, and what he meant was to be standing up there, but then to execute the way those two guys did. I don't care what the situation is. It's pretty impressive, and it's something they should take a lot of pride in because we're doing this interview in the cages, and I don't think anybody beats KT on the swings, and Miller's one of the guys that would be close. And if Miller won a catcher where he's spending a ton of time in the bullpen, maybe he could match KT swing for swing in here. Yeah, I, I think it's difficult just to write the lineup up, up there. So, you know, a couple years ago, I think we went to Round Rock and, and um, you know, it was the third weekend of the year. The first two weekends we kind of experimented and then we called that third weekend almost treat it like a, a regional or do or die, you know, must wins. And, um, you know, the first two, three games, we kind of treated them as must wins when making out the lineup. And so you're going to kind of lean towards experience when you're not quite sure. You know a guy can be good, but you don't know how he's going to be in his first go around. Uh, but as guys start to get the first one out of the way, then you can kind of start you know, mixing and matching, I think, a little more freely. And we now have 14 games remaining, if I'm not mistaken, before SEC play. They're all at home. 
uh, we, we need to leave no stone unturned. I know I say that a lot, but with this team more than any, we need to leave no stone unturned. Do you have any update on Maui or, or expectation when he might have tomorrow? No, I, I don't have a specific update. I, I know professionals uh, from different entities are working on it, which, you know, makes me feel as good as I can and, and hopefully him as good as he can about it. You know, people that are way more professional than me um, and a lot of people that are looking out for the kids' sole interests. So uh, hopefully an update uh, soon, but I don't have something specific now. How's he handling this? Like a champ. Um, I, almost, I almost cussed. That's goal one do, when doing any of these interviews. Um, li like a dang champ. Uh, and he's been really good about getting extra work in here and on the field because he knows he's not going to be burning a bunch of calories out there. Uh, he's been Jazzy's number one fan and next to him in warm-ups. If you guys are here in time, you kind of see what he's doing there. Um, and then he's just a fun-loving kid in general. Um, and then, you know, I thought his family handled it as well as they could too this past weekend. I don't know if that's right for me to speak on, but, um, you know, maybe if you guys talk to him, you know, He's kind of got something else going on too, so uh, with, with with family stuff. So it'd be nice if everybody would get healthy, and, and then we could go forward and, and continue to enjoy being around him. What do you see from top three of the lineup? That gave him a little more success tonight than this past weekend. Um, you know, Jared Dickey is such a high energy guy. You see it in everything he does, and it's kind of cool because he wasn't he didn't used to be like that. He he's transitioned a lot of things. And now he's a super high energy guy. And uh, I, I think it probably hurt him a little bit last weekend. Uh, probably the last kid on our roster I'd ever want to say anything negative about. But I think it hurt him that he was a little too amped up uh, last weekend. And he kind of had a little more calm to him. So when your leadoff guy's on base or one of your leaders ignites some things, um, you know, then, then you've got other guys behind him in a good position to do damage, which the two or three guys behind him are, are incredibly talented. When did you all become aware of this? Um, well, specifically for me, it was, uh, I'd say, close to about 24 hours before first pitch um, when we were in Arizona. Did you all have any idea that would be a possibility? Uh, yeah. Um, there had been some things that alluded to that a little bit. You had 12-plus strikeouts tonight for pitching staff. That's got to be huge. Yeah, yeah. You scared me there for a second. You, you, don't, <laughs> you don't want it on the offensive end, but when you've got good arms, um, y you know, uh, that that's that's something that'll happen if you throw it in the zone. And we spoke on fits, but heck, look at Bimby's got as good a stuff um, as he does. Really, it's a different look. Um, but when you're in the zone, that's that's going to happen. And you know, I joke on the offensive side, it'll happen to us too. Um, but you got to have competitive at bats. And the one thing they did was battle with our guys a little bit. So uh, kudos to the pitching staff as it relates to that strikeout number. Thanks, coach. Thank you all.